Hello YouTube! Today we are going to build a multi-step form using Formic, Yup for validation and Material UI for styling. You can see that in the first step of our form we have a first name, a last name and a checkbox. And this checkbox asking if the user is a millionaire is really important because in the next step you can see that if I only say 200 pounds in my bank account it says because you said you are a millionaire you need to have at least 1 million pounds. So let's say that I have 2 million pounds, I can move to the next step. And by the way, if I didn't put at least 2 million pounds, the next step doesn't happen, all right? We are stuck in this step while the validation is not correct. So let me put back the 2 million pounds. I move to the next step and now I can just type something here like hello world. When I submit, you will see that all the buttons become disabled, we have a spinner, and the number three after our call to our server is finalized, we'll have also a tick. At this moment, you can navigate to another page, you can clear this form and start from fresh, it's up to you. You will also see that I will try to be as close as possible during this tutorial to the demo that already exists inside the Formic repository. So we will try to explain what's happening and keep as close as possible to that repository. So without any further ado, let's jump into this video. If you want to follow along with me, make sure that when you git clone the repository, you are in this specific commit. Okay, and if you are, you will see this hello YouTube page. Now let's go to our VS Code and here in VS Code, we can start by removing this hello YouTube. So over here now, we will have a formic component, a form component and a field component. This field component will have the first name of the person. So the name will be first name. And because we want to have material UI over here, we can also pass a component that will be of type text field and the label will be first name. Okay, so our first field is now created. I imported everything we needed to import. And you can see that now Formic, as usual, is complaining that we need to pass some initial values. And those initial values for us will be the first name as an empty a string, then we have a second one that will be the last name of the person. We will have one that is asking if the person is a millionaire or not, which is a checkbox. Then after that millionaire, we ask how much money the person has in all their bank accounts. So it will start as zero. And at the end, we will have something called notes or description or details whatever you want to call to this one, right? It's just to have three pages to look nicer uh, in terms of design, right? So let's say it's a description. Okay, now that we have that one, the last bit is a non-submit function. So let's also pass that one to Formic so Formic doesn't complain at us. Now, the next step is for us to create the other fields, the other four fields that we are missing. So I will just do really fast this copy paste and now I can see that this one will not be a text field it will be a checkbox with label all right and it will come from there and VS Code already imported that which is good and the label will be I am a millionaire and this label at the moment will not work and you may be asking oh but why well because this library I'm using the Formic Material UI Formic Material UI as a specific scenario for that um, for that specific component for the checkbox with label. So if we go to their website and their API, you can see that the checkbox with label will have this format. So we can copy that one, go back to our VS Code and pass that format. So we don't forget about it and we will have a label to our checkbox, which is important for us, right? We can even say type equals to checkbox. The, this one will be a type of number because it's our money. So we can go over here and say money, money. Over here we can say money. And I will even copy paste these values, otherwise I will make a mistake and I don't want us to ruin the demo because of a typo, 
right? So over here, we can call this one description. This one, instead of money, probably all the money I have, which is probably a better description for making sure you are a millionaire or not. Because in reality, you can be a millionaire and have no money whatsoever. You can have, have everything in shares or in houses or cars, and you are still a millionaire, but you just don't have the paper in your hands, right? But for the demo, let's say that in order for you to be a millionaire, you need to have 1 million pounds or 1 million dollars or 1 million euros in your bank account, all right? So now that we have that, we can go to our browser and just make sure that our form is there. So everything seems to be there. This is a number, so I can type whatever I want. This is a checkbox. This is a description, last name. Oh, and I noticed something. The first name, the last name, they are having some autocompletes. So let's first remove those ones. And immediately after, we will start to do the validation. When you click in, I am a millionaire, all the money I have needs to be at least 1 million pounds or dollars, right? So let's go over here. And the first thing we need to do when we want to remove that autocomplete is over here to say autocomplete to off. And when this autocomplete is to off, we will have no autocomplete again. Now, as I said, let's do the validation. And to do validation, validation schema, because we are going to use yup, and we will use the object from yup, and the only field we want to validate over here is the money field. And the money field will be dependent on the millionaire field. So Formic already provides something for us. We can just import this from Yup. And now we can say for the money field, it will be of type mixed. And we need to import this one also from Yup. And we can already import the number because we will need the number in a second. And we can say the mixed when the field millionaire is true, so someone clicked on the checkbox and now that checkbox is true, then we will say that this is a number, is required, and is at least 1 million pounds, all right? By the way, this is valid notation for numbers. I just discovered this a few months ago, and it's nicer when you have something big, it's quite nice, right? So we have required and minimum is 1 million pounds. So instead of having like this, you can have, oops, ah, my computer is crashing. <laughs> you can have like this. Now we can have also the otherwise. So if it's false in this case, it's still a number. It needs to be required and because not everybody in the world has the luxury to have their bank account with positive money, I will leave no minimum value to zero because your bank account can in reality be negative, right? So let's keep it as is. We can now save this one. And if we go to our browser, we can check two things we did. So no autocompletes over here. And right now, if I have something that's not at least 1 million pounds, we have this message saying money must be greater or equal than 1 million pounds. We can even make a better message because honestly, I don't like that message. So we can say, because you said you are a millionaire, you need to have 1 million pounds or 1 million only. And people know by their currency, right? <laughs> so let's put a comma over here, not a dot. And when we come back to our browser, we refresh this one. And after all the errors are gone, we should now be able to see that that message is there because you said you are a millionaire, you need to have at least 1 million pounds. And now I destroyed something. Why have I done? Doo -doo 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 -doo. Everything seems to be fine. Let's go back here. Ah, okay, it was still compiling. As I said, my computer is quite slow today. So when I click over there and I say just, I have one pound, because you said you are a millionaire, you need to have one million. So this is working. Now it's the time when we start to do our multi-steps. And so if we want to do our multi-steps, we need to come over here. And just to start, the first thing I'm going to do is to say, the first three 
are in the first step. This one will be in the second step. And the third one will be in a third step. So let's start by doing just a simple div over here just to have a visual difference between the steps. Okay, so let me just do this. Now, oops, now come over here and do this and come over here and do this. So now I can just do copy paste over there, copy paste and this copy paste over here. All right. And now at least we have a completely clear um, difference of what we want to be the first step, the second step and the third step. Right. So our first thing we need to do is to create what I will call a formic stepper. So let me show you what I mean by that. Let me go over here and say export function formic stepper. And this formic stepper will have exactly the same inputs as formic. So we can even check what formic has at the moment. And I think it's something like a values. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, it's a formic config and a formic values. So we can copy that one and say our props will be of type formic config and formic values. So we can go up top and say in the formic to import formic config and formic values, right? So now we have a component that will receive exactly the same inputs as formic. We can go at the bottom and we can say the following. We will receive everything. We will have a children, a props. And now that we have this, we can just copy paste roughly what we did over here for this formic and the form. So let's come from here to the top, copy this one, right? And just do the following, control V. And now I don't want any validation yet. I don't want any initial values or any on submit. I just want to pass, oops, I just want to pass all the props that we are already passing, right? So if we do that, we can come over here, close this formic, and now just do a return over here. And here we will have the children. So this is the first step in order for us to control what formic stepper is doing. We can go over here, copy this, and just rename this one instead of formic to formic stepper. At the moment, nothing should change. Everything should be the same. We are just creating our own wrapper on top of formic. And you will see that this, oops, this needs to be our formic stepper. And you will see that this will be useful in a second. Let me just go to the browser to make absolutely sure that everything is as we expect. And as you see, my computer is really, really, really slow today. So we have this first step. And let me just make sure that when I click here, and I click there, I go away, we still have the validation working. So everything is still working as it was two minutes ago. Now, what's the first step? The first step we need to do is to come over here and check the children's that we are receiving and pass them to an array. So we will have them as an array. So let's say that we have a children array, which will be react.children to array and we will pass our children. So now we make sure that we have an array of children, which is fantastic for now. Let me just import React from React because we are in an XJS application. So up to this moment, I didn't have that imported. If you are in a Create React app, you already had that one imported. So I can go to the bottom once again, and I can say, okay, I have my children array. And if I have my children array, over here, instead of showing all my children, I can just show the children from that specific step. So let me create a new state that will be a step. We will have a set step equals to use state. And this use state, we will start at zero, right? Because the first page or the first step is the step zero. We can import this one. And immediately after we do that, we can say const current child equals to children array of um, children array of step. So at this moment, our current child is what we want to show, right? And 
when we go to the browser in a second, we will see that we are only showing the first three fields. The fourth field and the fifth field, we are not showing at all. So let me just format this code to make sure that it looks nice for our eyes to be able to read what we are doing. Going back to our browser and refreshing, we should only see now the first three steps. And actually, I'm doing something wrong. What I did, current child, child array, and I'm saying the step of zero, and I know what, I'm what I did. Look what I did. <laughs> and this is a mistake that you will probably do uh, as well. I have a form and the, the immediate child of my formic stepper is my form. So what I'm literally doing over here is saying, okay, the first child, show the first child. I only have one child, so it will show this form. But because we already have this form inside the formic stepper, and I will show you once again, I already have this form over here in the formic stepper. It's safe to remove it from there. And now if you see the immediate child of our formic stepper, it will be these divs. So now, yes, now when I go to my browser, I will see only the first three checkboxes, uh, checkbox, sorry, the first three fields, not the first three checkboxes. And now that we have that, we can start to create a button to go back and forward to our form. So let me go over here. And at this moment, I will create two buttons. OK, and the first button I will create will be a back button. So I will say button and this button is coming from Material UI as well. And we can say back button. And every time that this back button is clicked, we can say set uh sorry on click on click equals to set step of the current step minus one all right and this will have problems on its own if we don't do any validation before because we need to check if the step is already zero we shouldn't show this button so let's just do that validation immediately to not forget so if step equals equals or better yet if the step is bigger than zero, right? We show this, otherwise we don't show anything. So our back button should now be correctly working and should be perfect by this point. Now, the second thing we need to do is a forward button or a next button. So let's copy this one because it's just easier to copy. And as you know, I'm a bit lazy. And now we can have something over here we can, instead of having an on-click, we will take advantage of Formic on itself and say that this is a submit, all right? And if we take advantage of that, Formic before calls our on-submit here on this form, on-submit, all right? Before it calls this on-submit on this form, Formic will make sure that the form is valid. So we kind of do two actions in one go. We make sure it's valid before we navigate, which is great. And at the same time, if we are already on the last step, it's a, a submit as well. So this is great for us, right? So what can we do? We can over here say that this is an asynchronous function. We will receive values and helpers, right? And now what we need to do, we can check if form, uh, not form, sorry, if the step is equals 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 to the children array dot length minus one, which means we are on the last step of our form, right? If we are on the last step of our form, we can just do the following await of props dot on submit. And to these ones, we will pass the values and we will pass the helpers, right? And this is calling our parent when we are on the last step. But imagine that we are on the first step. We just want to move forward. So we can say else we will just move forward. So we can say set step current step plus one, right? And so if we are on the last step, we don't even call this one because this one will be called. So we don't even need to do many more validations. The only thing we need to do right now is instead of this being a next, when we are on the last page, 
right? We will probably call it a submit or a save button or anything that makes sense in the context of your application. And knowing that I will repeat this logic quite a lot, I can create a function that I will call is last, last step. And in this is last step, we can say just this. So our code over here will be even nice to read. It's much easier to read now. If it's the last step, then call your parent on submit. Otherwise, just move one step forward. It's easier to read this way. And over here, we can do exactly the same thing. We can go over here and say, is last step. And if it is, we will say submit. In your application, probably you can say save or something that makes sense in your application, right? So we can now save this one. We can format all this code and our stepper is almost done. You will see that we have a major bug in that stepper, right? Let me go to the browser. And when I refresh this one, you will see that I will not be able to advance. So if I do, I'm a millionaire and I click next, I will not be able to advance. And do you know why is it happening? Well, we have the next page or the next step with the field that depends on this one. So that field that's not on the screen at the moment is failing. Our form is not valid because our form is not valid. Formic is not calling our own submit function because our own submit function is not being called. We can't move forward. If we make this one false, you will see that we will be able to move forward because now this field over here is no longer invalid. So how can we handle this? Well, the solution is quite easy. We can replace our formic divs, these divs that we have over here, right? And we can create a field now, a field, sorry, not a field, a component now that we can call, for example, formic step, which will be just a step in formic. Let's go over here and we will do something really similar to what we did for this one. Right? So let me copy this one. And instead of calling this a stepper, I will call it just a step, right? And what I care over here is all the steps that I do, right? I will care about only one thing, which is the validation schema. If in your application, you care about more things, you can pick more things. So I will use a, a TypeScript helper for this. So I will call it interface formic step props extends this one okay and now when i'm extending this one i can say that i need two things i can say pick and when i use pick typescript will as the name implies pick only the properties i will pass over here as a string in my case i just care about the children and i care about the validation schema okay validation schema so now my formic steps all right, we'll have only the children and the validation schema. If you try to pass something else like an unsubmit or something like that, this component will not accept because it only accepts these four mix steps. So now it's safe for us to go over here and replace everything by four mix step. Oops, not step props, step. All right, let me copy this one and replace everything that was a div before by these four mix steps. I can now go super safely to our validation schema. And instead of having the validation schema in the top level of the form, I will remove from the top level of the form and put it only in the step that matters for me. And the step that matters for me is the second one, because that's where that field is. But doing this on itself, well, nothing specially happened, right? We need, oops, we need also to return over here, return the children, right? And just for React to work correctly, we can put it inside a fragment, right? So now that we have all our children, oops, this is the, the interface, not the component. 100% my bad, I'm sorry. So we can do this, right? And now, we will receive these properties, but we are not going to do anything specifically with those properties. And in reality, is no longer properties. We just receive the validation schema, but we don't need to care about it because if someone wants, they will pass it in the formic steps like we are doing over there, 
right? Now, this guy is now complaining and it's saying that he's missing the following properties from the type formic config on submit. But we already did the formic steps. So we just need to come to our component and now say that we receive just the properties we created over here, which are the children and the validation schema. So when VS Code does the validation again, that one shouldn't be a problem anymore. Okay. And now that we have that, we can even come over here and say as react dot element type. And the element type of this will be a formic step props. All right. So we know that we have an array of formic step props. Knowing this will give us one really amazing opportunity. And I will show you what I mean by that. Let me just do a console log and go to the browser because probably I typed already too much without, without showing you in the browser. So let me do this. And now this one is complaining about a lot of things. It doesn't really matter for now. Let me just remove this one and we will take care of it in a second. So we have that. We are printing this so you will be able to go to the browser and see what's happening. So if I do F12, let me open these over here, right? And I do next, you can see that I received a children, which is of this type. But the most important thing that we need to care now is we have a props over here and I have a child and I have a validation schema. And this validation schema is literally what I care about at this stage. So we can go over here. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, we can go over here and say that the current child, it will be as react dot element type, oops, element type of formic step props. All right. And saying this, now I can go safely inside these current props and do dot props dot validation schema. And this is exactly what we care about for our formic. So let's go over here and say validation schema, right? Will be our current child dot props dot validation schema. Because in each step, we just want to validate that specific step. We don't want to validate any other step, right? So for, for meme, for mic, Bruno, Bruno. <laughs> so this is a formic step, uh, step props, right? Let me just copy this one to make sure that we have the exact same name. And yes, we have the exact same name. So this one shouldn't complain anymore. And with this over here, we are now safe to just go to our browser and you will see that our validation is now working as we were expecting from the beginning. So let me refresh these. And this after refreshing, we can say Bruno, my last name. We can say, yes, I'm a millionaire. I can say next. And if I try to do next, oops, sorry, you can't because you said you are a millionaire. You need to have at least 1 million pounds. So let's say that I have 20 million pounds. I can click next. I'm in the description, which is the last step of our form. And I can say, hello world. I can submit and the submission happened, right? So now it's time for us to start to make this look a bit nicer. We already solved the main issue of this video. So if you don't want to see me making this form a bit nicer, you already know how to do steps and you can probably uh, disconnect from this video. And I hope to see you next week. If you care about the formic look and field, I will now keep going and making this form look a lot nicer. OK, so the first step for us to make this form look slightly nicer is to go over here at the top and we can make all the fields we have inside, for example, a box. So let's go and say a box and let's wrap everything into a box. And when I do that and wrap everything into a box, I'm literally going to ask this box to have a padding bottom of, I don't know, 
two, three, three probably, right? Padding bottom of two is 16 pixels, of three is 24 pixels. Okay, let's start by a padding bottom of two only. So padding bottom of two. And if this works correctly, we can do exactly the same for the other two steps in our form. So let me just format and I'm confident enough. I will do this. I'm, I'm really confident that it will work correctly. So let's just do this. Let's put this box over here and copy this one and putting this one over here, right? Oops, not a control X, a control C and ending the formic step. So now it should look quite nice, our form, or at least much nicer than before. Let me go over here. And if I refresh, I go back to the first ever step in our form, right? And now our fields at least are in sequence. I just need to say that all the fields should be a full width. So let's say that all the screen, all the fields now will be full width. Let's go to this one. Oops, this one as well. And this one is full width. Now I go to this one and I will say it's also full width. This one will also be full width. And this one is also full width. So every single field is now full screen. All right. Now, the next thing that I want to make to make this look a bit nicer is to come to our buttons at the bottom and say color equals to primary. And I think the variant is contained. Variant is contained. I think this is it. Let me copy this one and also add it to this button. I can save this. And now let's go to the browser to see if after all these changes, if yeah, this is looking nice. So I have that one and I can say Bruno, my last name. I can go to the second step. We can put some spacing over there, but for now it's good. I can say one, two, three, four. I move forward. I can say the description as hello world and I can submit. So this is working nicely, right? Let me just check what's this. Uh, da -da 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 doesn't recognize a full width. Oh, okay. We are saying in the checkbox full width and the checkbox doesn't have a full width, which is expected. So let's remove this from the checkbox. So that error is gone. All right. So let's just format this one last time. And the last bit I want to do, and I really want to do this last bit is I want at the top to have one, two, three in terms of steps. So we can go to the material UI components and over here they have something that they call it a step or a stepper. So get started, go to components, and I think it's a stepper. Oops, I think it's a stepper. Yes, it is a stepper. And now in this stepper, we can do something quite nice. We can go to this one and just copy what they are doing, right? Oops, I didn't want to open it. I just wanted to click over here. And now I can go to the bottom of this one and let's see, doo -doo 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 -doo. where do they have that part of the example? Mm -hmm. I think it's this bit. So let's copy this bit over here and we can go to the top of our formic over here and say, we, end, we want a stepper and the stepper in reality will go through all our child, right? So we can go over here and get the children array. And in the children array, first, let me import this. Let me say that the map will be on our children array. And I'm, I can see that now they receive also a step, which is our step. And we need the step and a step label. And so they also have a label. So we can go to our formic step and create a label. So we will be able, when we do the props.validation schema, we also have a props.label. So let me go over here into our interface and say, we have a label which will be of type string. Now, all our formic steps will start to fail, but 
even before they fail, we can say um, more info, for example, for the last step, we will call it more info. For this step, we can call it um, bank accounts, for example, and this is personal data, right? So this is personal, personal data. I think are good names, right? So when we do that, we can go again to the bottom of our page. And now that we have this over here, we have this label, we have the steps. Let me just make sure that we are importing everything from step, step label. Okay, looks like we are. So we can go to our component over here, refresh, and now we have that thing over there at the top. So we are doing a huge mistake right now, right? Let me go to the bottom and instead of passing everything, we don't want everything. We want to grab that child and inside the child, we will do child.props.label. And so we can copy this one and put it over there. Otherwise, what we were doing was we were showing all the, the, ch the child as they were. So with the fields and the form and everything, and that's not what we want, right? So we can now go and now it's starting to look much nicer. Let me just refresh, clear this, refresh. And when we refresh, I don't even know why I have this still open. When we refresh, you have personal data, bank accounts, and more info. The fields start to look super nice. So I can say Bruno, my last name, I wish I was a millionaire. I click next and I need to say full width for this one. I removed it probably. So now it's okay. I can click next and in the description I say, yeah, I wish I was rich. <laughs> so now we could submit and do whatever we wanted. So let me just go over here and do one, one nice thing for our, um, for our field before let me just put the full width to the second field so this one will be full width and we never remove the full width from this oops i did a mistake i removed the full width from here instead of removing the full width from the checkbox ah bruno 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 <laughs> okay so now on top of that we shouldn't have any errors in our console so refreshing all the errors should be gone, hopefully, right? And yes, all the errors are gone now, so I can close the console. And now I can say, Bruno Antunj, I'm a millionaire. I can say a lot of money, submit. And when it submits, now we just need to create the unsubmit function. And I want to make some kind of spinner in this button while it's submitting and disable the buttons. That's the last bit we need to do today. So let me go over here at the bottom, right? Do 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 at the bottom. And now we can over here say that in the formic, we can grab the context and know if we are submitting or not. So we can do is submitting. I think it's like that oops and now i can just grab this to the bottom of this component immediately before form so we know if we are submitting and if we are submitting we just need to say disabled equals to is submitting and disabled oops disabled equals to is submitting right on top of that when something is submitting you can even change the the field or at least you can change the text of the last field so you can say is submitting if it is submitting you can say um sub meeting right otherwise we will say submit or next let's go to our browser refresh and we can put some spacing also between back and submit we will do that in a second so Let's just say I'm a millionaire, put something here that really doesn't matter. Move forward. We do that. And now we have submit and we just need to have 
some sleeping state over here. So let's create const sleep equals to a function or yeah, it can be a function that we say time. And this function will return a new promise with accepted. And we will say set timeout of accepted and we will pass the time. Right, so we can say over here in our on submit, we can say something nice. We can say that it will be an asynchronous function. And so we will do await sleep of three seconds. And we can say values. And so we will do console.log um, values and values. All right. So in imagining that these three seconds is we doing a call to an HTTP, an HTTP call to a server. So we will be waiting three seconds right now. Now that that one is done, we just need to go to the bottom, make sure that I still have this on submitting. Yes, I have the submitting over there. So refreshing this, we can now fill the form again. If we are in a real application, probably we can create a script to allow us to move forward a bit faster, right? So doing this, and now it's submitting, the buttons are disabled while we are submitting, and then we finish that one, right? So let me just put some space over here, and I think we are done when I do that, right? I think we are. I don't think, I'm not remembering about anything that I want to do more. So let me do the grid. And on the grid, I can say that this is a container. We can say a spacing of two. And now inside this, I will have a grid, which is an item. So we close this grid and I will have another grid over here. Grid, which is also of type item. And I just need to close this grid. So now those two buttons, right? they are completely aligned. We are in a right place. It will be nice if after those three seconds, right, we could say that the last step also has a tick because at the moment, if you saw our last step, ah, I didn't import grid. Our last step, I can import from here. Our last step at the moment is not putting a tick when we go to the last step, it puts the, the tick on the two first, but not in the last one. We can achieve that if we want to. And so let me just do this bit over here and say const completed set completed equals to use state of false. So by default, we are not completed, right? And so when we finish in the last step, we can say the following. We can go over here and say set completed to be true. You can even do something else, which is helpers dot reset form. So you clear immediately the form and we can even say set uh, step uh, to be zero, for example, right? So we go immediately, mm, but let's not do that. Let's leave the form as is and just show the set completed with the tick. Right. So now when we go to the last step, right, we should see the tick. Let's try that out. Refresh just to make sure that we are really in the first page. We will put the F12 to make sure we don't have any errors. So I will say Bruno and Tunj. I am a millionaire. Yes, I am. <laughs> Let's put a lot of money over there. Click now in the description. Hello world. I can clear this, this is one of my extensions. And now when I click submit, I'm submitting and I should have all the values over here, which is great. Let me just do the spinner I talked about before. So we can have, I think is a spinner or a loading, circular loading. I think it's something like that, progress. And inside progress, I think we have this circular loading, circular progress, not circular loading. Okay, so we can go over here to our buttons and we just need to do one thing. Our buttons in material, they have something called start icon. And so if is submitting, we will say circular progress. If not, we say null. We can even say the size of this will be 
one RAM, so it will be the same size of our text, right? We can save this, and if this works, this is the last thing we need to do for today. Let me just refresh the page, and refreshing the page, it should now go to the first step, right? We are in the first step, so let me repeat everything again. This is becoming a bit boring. Oh, circular progress is not defined because I didn't import it. Yeah, yeah, good job, Bruno. Good job, good job. <laughs> so we import now the circular progress, right? And after we import the circular progress, we can now refresh our page. It will probably take a few seconds for it to load. And now that we are here, we can say Bruno and Tunj. Yes, I'm a millionaire. Next, one, two, three, four. Next, description, hello world. Submitting with a spinner. And when it finishes, we just need to put the completed over here. We are setting the completed, but we are not setting it into the step. So the last thing, and this is actually the last thing, completed, completed equals to is last step, right? Uh, do we want to do this? Because if we do the completed over here, it will say that if we are the last step or we are completed. So actually what we want is if we are not in the current step or if the current step, let me do this, index. So the index will start at zero. So when we are in the current step is zero, it's not completed. But when the current index is number one and this value is the zero, then it's completed. So we can say current or step, step is bigger than the index or completed, completed, right? Now, yes, if our current step is above this step, right? Or we are completed, now we will show completed also. Well, it's already showing, but I will refresh the form and do it one last time. Spend ourselves another 10 or 15 seconds filling this form. So, Antunj, yes, I'm a millionaire. Next, this is all the money I have. Description, hello world. So, we have the first two checked. So, after the three seconds, you can look into this number three, and this number three should be checked. So, it is checked. I think we did everything we proposed to do for this video. Uh, I really hope to see you over here next week. If this video was helpful, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I see you soon enough. Bye-bye.